Hello and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to get your TNT cannon in Minecraft to have an infinite amount of TNT ammo. So this video is going to require the use of MC Edit, which is a great tool for Minecraft. And um, there'll be a link to download that in the description. So um, here we have a TNT cannon and it works perfectly fine. As you can see, I load up with TNT and shoot it off and there we go. We've blown up our enemy. But every time you want to shoot, you have to reload, and to be honest, it's a hassle. So, first we're going to modify this. And you don't have to modify exactly how I am. If you've got your own TNT cannon, which is perhaps different, you can do it differently. But what you need to do is you need to put a piston facing into the like shot carriage and the propellant carriage, which in, case, which in my case, this is the shot carriage this part here because this is where the TNT which is going to get shot goes and this is the propellant ca carriage so for the time being I'm just going to take out the water and I'm going to come over here extend this out by two like so and I'm just going to take away the middle and then fill in the ground this part's actually more important we don't have to fill in that part but just fill in another part there and that part's actually quite important it has to be ground beneath it so then you put a row of pistons and this is going to push your loaded loaded stuff into your into your actual carriage where you're going to shoot it great so then just hook it all together so you can reload it at the same reload it all at the same time like so and basically what is going to happen is we're going to have TNT coming into here and actually probably not the last part there so we have TNT coming into here and it is going to basically just load back into the cannon and we're going to have a infinite source of TNT here I'll show you how to do that in just a minute so we've got our cannon and everything's good now what we need to do is quite odd but it makes sense once we jump into MC Edit grab a piece of sand or gravel and just place it anywhere but you've got to place it somewhere where it can fall because we need this thing to become an entity a falling sand entity to be specific so let's go ahead and do that and whilst it's falling we just save and quit the title okay so I'm gonna now jump into MC Edit. I'm gonna go to my MC Edit folder thing and launch it like so. As you can see it's launching. La -dee -da, -dee da And we're in MC Edit. Just allow it to load up and we're gonna go into your world. And as you can see, we have the cannon in MC Edit. And we also have the falling sand, represented by this red sort of square. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab the square in your selection box and you want to go to your filter. And now these filters that I'm using will be in the channel description as well. And I'm going to say this is Seth Blink's filter, so credit goes to him. I'm sure most of you probably know of Seth Blink. So we're going to go to Change Entities. We're going to leave everything the same except the falling, well not actually everything. But we're going to go to the falling block ID and we'll change that to 46, which is the ID of TNT, non-lit TNT. Then this is important. Um, go down to Falling Block Drop Item and tick False and click Snap to Grid. There you go changed your entity to a TNT that will not drop a block when it breaks and that's quite important because otherwise you're going to have hundreds of item entities spawning um, which will not be ideal so great now what we need to do is you just place one in the carriage either the carriages doesn't really matter go to clone nudge it across one time and repeat for the duration of your carriage now there can be a vertical ca carriage or a horizontal carriage like this it won't make any difference great okay so clone it and here we have a bunch of TNT entities sitting in your carriage take one of the entities again and clone it again take that to the shot carriage like so hit clone and then we just want to take all of these entities and create a spawner out of them which isn't that difficult so take your selection and you can basically just hover it over pretty much the entire entire region 
ho unless there's more entities around, then you don't want to be doing this. You just want to make sure you're selecting the entities of TNT. Go to the other spawner, the other the other filter, which is the create spawners filter. You want to load that up, and it's very important that you click include position data or data. Hit filter, and a bunch of spawners will appear. Great. So practically done now. All you need to do is go to the change spawner properties, change the minimum spawner delay to one, and the maximum spawner delay to two. Bump up the detection range so it'll work if you're close to it, or maybe 100 is a bit high, 60, just so that you don't want to get too far away from it to stop it from working. And hit filter. There we go. Great. So now we can hit save. Actually, no, before we save, one more thing we should do, we should just um, move these first. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to deselect it. Um, select this spawner f first. God, it's being a bit nitpicky. Deselect that. I just want this single spawner. Pick that up and simply nudge it out of the way. So I'm just going to nudge it all the way over there. Just so it's out of the range. And then we're going to take the rest of these spawners. And as you can see, they're, they're denoted by falling sand spawner. So just be careful to select just the spawners and nudge them out in a way which won't delete your entire cannon. Um, so up, perhaps across, um, up again, and then out. believe that didn't delete anything. Nope, nice. Nudge it all the way out here. And I think we're good. So hit save there. Awesome. Now let's exit out of MC Edit, back into Minecraft. I can do its thing. Okay, back into Minecraft. And now we should have a spawner which will allow us to load our TNT can. So as soon as we jump into Minecraft, and you see there's not much there right this second, but soon enough this starts spawning. And you might want to quickly try and replace this just to. Oh, for, for God's sake. Um, okay. Okay, so I'll be back in a sec. I'm just going to fix this small issue. If this happens, just go into MC Edit and fix it yourself. I'm not going to turn it on camera, but I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back, and as you can see, I've just replaced it in um, MC Edit just to clean it up a little. So now just finish it off, and as you can see, we're pretty much finished here. Now all we need to do is hook it up so that this will reload itself automatically once finished which is easy enough to do just take power from up here because it's going to be finished after this so take it from up here and you're just going to want to give it a little bit of delay don't want it going and reloading too soon um, not too sure exactly how long you should wait with this but um, I'm just going to give it a couple four tick delays um, like so you could optimize this yourself if you want to find out how short of an amount of time you can do this for but I can't be bother risking it blowing up so I'm just gonna keep it like that that looks good alright so let's load it up um, like so just hit the button that was a bit strange and glitchy but as you can see the TNT entities, once they have been interacted with, they just become normal TNT. And the flashing one is just because there's constant spawning happening there. So it is like that. Doesn't make any difference. It will only push out one each time, so you don't need to worry. Pop back in the water, and let's give it a spin. And hope it really works. Okay. Loading up. Kaboom. Fire. Reload. Nice. Awesome. So there you have it, um, automatic infinite reloading TNT system, I think it's pretty nifty and I'm going to be using this in my map that I'm making where you fight a boss which shoots at you, should be good. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching, um, if you haven't used MC Edit before I hope this tool sort of inspired you 
to try it out and showed you how awesome it is because it's a really useful program. It's not cheating or anything, it's just awesome in general. Um, I highly recommend you get into using it if you want to do some serious, seriously awesome stuff in Minecraft. I think it's great. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. If you have, a like rating would be much appreciated. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.